So it's been about 10 days since I filmed anything at the compost pile here. There were weeds everywhere. I just got those cleaned up. It's the least favorite job to do here in gardening is weeding. So hand weeded everything. It finally looks presentable. You can turn the camera back on. Um, but we've got really good growth in that last 10 days. Our plant has now hit the ground. And if you look closely, you can see two little pumpkins there. And we're going to choose one of them. And down this side, we also have the secondary vines coming down and they're getting to the bottom. They're going to soon be on their own because this is like rock solid ground here. It's sand, it's gravel. There's no nutrients in this soil. So we have to get a really huge root base in this compost pile uh, to feed that pumpkin. Now that we have all the weeds cleaned up on the pile, it's time to get these vines looking good. They're kind of crisscrossing and starting to look like a big salad here. So I want to clean them up. We'll pull them straight and then we'll pin them down with our bamboo stakes. So there, we have all the secondary vines, those side vines coming off now at 90 degrees and they're pinned down and it just looks really good. It's nice and clean and you can see the wind blowing now. The airflow can get through that plant. Um, you know, it's not overcrowded. You're not gonna get as many disease issues uh, when you have a nicely pruned plant and it's just gonna grow better. Since we have all of our vines running this way, parallel, nice and neat, I don't want any side vine growth or third stage growth going across those vines. So I'm removing all of these at every leaf node, you're going to get a secondary vine coming off. Here's a good view. So this is what I was removing as I took the vine, but I have lots of spare space over here, the back of the compost pile, the plant grew that way, but I'm going to send a few of this third stage growth back over here because I'm really just trying to get as many roots into this compost pile as I can. So when I say fill this area, this back area with roots, what does that mean? Well, another little secret if you're growing almost any vine in your garden, pumpkins, squash, cucumbers, they all send a root down at every leaf as well. They'll send the side vine out and they'll also send a root down. So if we take a peek here, look what starts to come out there. There's a tiny little root and as soon as it feels moisture, it starts to grow. A really good example, that one's already in the soil. So the main two things that that taproot's going to do is the obvious one, it's going to tap into this soil and pin down the vine. So when we get a windstorm, it's not going to move. But the big thing I want is the nutrients. It's going to go down and fill this area up with roots. It's going to pull up that moisture, the nutrients, and feed that pumpkin all year long. So in the next few days, I'm going to go around and actually put soil over top of all those little leaf nodes, and that's going to help that root come out quicker and get established into the compost. That's a real big trick. If you want to get a huge root system, uh, you want to get all those tap roots fixed down. It is now July, and we do have our plant growing pretty well. I have to say it looks pretty good. I've honestly only put maybe 20 watering cans on this plant, so it's been on its own. We got rain last night, about that much rain. It's been very dry. So once we get the rain, which is going to come at some point, this plant will really like it and take off. So we've been really focused on getting the plant to grow, the vines, the green. We've got that laid out where we want. We've got some size to it, but now we have to start thinking about pumpkins. We have to grow a pumpkin here. I'm not trying to just grow a big plant. So I want my pumpkin to be on the main vine. That is that main vine that came out of the soil and started to run this way. So here at the tip, we have one back here and that's a pumpkin and that's a flower and that's going to open in a few days and the bees pollinate it and the fruit sets and you're on your way. We also have a small one here and I'm actually going to keep this one, I think, because we're in a bad spot here. If this pumpkin grows as big as I think it can, you know, it's going to be pretty big and we're kind of still in the compost pile here so I have to get it out on some flat ground to give it some space to grow. I may pollinate that one just in case because you know you never know what you're going to get next but this is a tiny little pumpkin and that's hopefully going to be the one that grows into a giant pumpkin for us. And on one of these back secondaries I actually have a pumpkin that opened today. Uh, I left this one on just so that we could see it. I have no interest in growing a pumpkin on a side vine or especially on a hill like that. So this is going to get pulled off, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. And I have way too many cucumber beetles. Those are cucumber bugs. I gotta get rid of those guys. But that is a pumpkin open and it is, that is a flower from a pumpkin. So that is what we're looking for there in a few days. That one's probably a week away, that small one. 
that larger one's going to, going to open in a day or two. Um, so that's what you get. When that flower opens, you have about a four to six hour window to get either the bees to pollinate that, or like we do, I'm going to hand pollinate this pumpkin so that we increase our chances of getting a successful fruit set. It's the next morning and yes, our female flower on our pumpkin plant has opened, so it is ready to be pollinated. It has that four to six hour window where we have to get some pollen in here. The bees will naturally do that. The pollinators, there goes one right now. <laughs> one just flew in there. Um, so you'll always have that work for you. You do not have to do this. The pollinators will most of the time get pollen in there enough to set the fruit, but I'll show you how to physically uh, hand pollinate a pumpkin. I know that sounds a little weird, a little strange, but we'll, uh, we'll look at that right now and I'll show you how you can ensure better results on pumpkin pollination. Pumpkin pollination time. So how are you going to hand pollinate your pumpkin? And I apologize because there's a lot of innuendo in pumpkin pollination. What I'm going to say here is strictly about a pumpkin, so don't think about anything else. This is a male pumpkin flower. These will be all over your plant on almost every vine will have a lot of male flowers. They have a long stem and the flower. The female pumpkin is what you want. It is an actual small pumpkin with a flower on the end. This is called a female flower. This is your male flower. We need to put them together to pollinate. So what you want to do is start with the male flower. That's the long stemmed flower. So I like to remove the flower petals, just like that. So again, we're pollinating a pumpkin here, so just relax. So I'm just going to trim back some petals here on the female flower. I wouldn't normally do that, but it's easier for you to see. So we have small, tiny little grains of pollen on that. And we want to just paint, paint the pollen onto the lobes of this female flower. So the male just goes on or into the female flower. Again, don't get caught up in the innuendo. It's just pollinating a pumpkin. And that's all I do. And then if you're into competitive pumpkin growing where you're trying to keep the genetics clean, you would then just, you know, fold that up, put a cup over it or something or tie it up so that the bees and the other pollinators can't get into it. But that is really all you need to do. I would probably take more than one male flower and pollinate two just to increase your chances. Again, no innuendo there. So after about 48 hours, you'll know if your pumpkin has taken. Um, you want to make sure that this stays nice and shiny like it is and glossy. This looks healthy like a small little pumpkin and it should slowly grow. Don't, don't freak out if your pumpkin doesn't like double in size in a day. It's going to be slow off the start. You just want to make sure that this remains nice and smooth, fresh looking flesh on here. Um, and then you'll see it start to slowly grow as the pollination takes off. So good luck pollinating your pumpkin. So it has been six days since we pollinated our pumpkin and it's time to go check on it. So we're going on a family vacation tomorrow for a week and it's right during pumpkin pollination season. Like who does that, right? So we have the one pollinated, I think it's held on. We'll take a closer look here in a minute. But the second one that I was really eyeing, that I kind of wanted uh, for a pollination, is probably going to open up tomorrow or the next day when I'm gone. So we might have to just leave that one up to the birds and the bees. So if we take a look at this one, it looks like the pollination has held on. It looks like this is going to be a viable pumpkin. It's still a bit early at a week. Um, you can always lose them in the early days. So a bit further down the line, we have the pumpkin that I was really eyeballing, this one. And you can kind of see the flower is not quite open yet and that's going to either be tomorrow or the next day that that opens. So we actually got some rain yesterday, that was nice. The plant has responded well, we've got the good color. We've now made it to the outside of the mound, so we've almost completely covered the compost pile. So these vines are starting to run. What I want to do now is bury some vines. I'll show you a little trick. If you want to get some extra growth out of your pumpkins in your garden, uh, I'll show you a little trick to get more root. I want to get a lot of root growth into that compost pile. There's some really nice roots starting. I shouldn't pull this out, but we'll see how deep it's rooted just for the camera. That's pretty solid in there. Oh, I broke it. Oh, I broke it off. So that's a really, look at this root here. This one's coming out nicely. So that is what we want to see 
burying vines as they call it in the giant pumpkin growing world is the worst part of the summer's job of growing a competitive giant pumpkin it's kind of backbreaking you got to try and reach in put mounds of compost all over every leaf axis where the leaf comes out of the vine that's where you will get one or two roots if you bury it very well so what i'm going to do is take a couple pails over to the pile of one and a half year old compost that we made on video i'm going to gently get some of that out of there without disturbing any of those turtle eggs that we have in there and then we're going to come over here i'm going to trim off any third stage growth on this pumpkin i'm going to go through there you know reluctantly and bury as many vines as i can here quickly and I'm gonna hope when I return that all of those leaf nodes have sent roots down into the compost and we've basically multiplied our root base by 50. And that is going to hopefully pay off down the road here in a few weeks and months as we try and get some major growth out of this pumpkin. So there's a good view of our stump. This is where we started our plant. We put that in the ground. That's our 1,246 pound pumpkin and that vine runs all the way down there to our pumpkin so there we go we've got everything buried at the leaf axis with compost we covered it it was only nine buckets so it wasn't too too bad it's just pretty difficult everything's on an angle i can see why people grow on flat ground not on these mounds not really fun pretty much done for the day so we'll take one last look at our pumpkin it is that size it is about i don't know four inches long I think it's still healthy. We'll definitely know more in seven days when I get back here, but that's what we got so far. Cucumber beetles, not good.